Hello and welcome. In a region of divisions, this young musician tries to unite. Using the ethnic diversity of Israel to promote tolerance and understanding, he finds himself blending the sounds from very different cultures to create a unique fusion. But it's not without controversy. This week on One on One, meet singer, songwriter and Israeli pop icon, Idan Raikel. It's a blend of everything from European to African, and this Ashkenazi Jew sporting distinctive dreadlocks makes no apologies for it. Born in Israel, Eden Rachel claims to have no roots of his own when it comes to his music. He began his musical career as a young boy playing the accordion, and his passion for creating something new has been matched by his success. For the ethnic mix living in Israel, often with cultural tensions, the eclectic and innovative union Rachel represents provides a refreshing relief, particularly with sounds and artists bringing together Ethiopian, Yemeni and Zulu influences, among others. It is, says Rachel, all about love and the vibe. And judging by how much he's achieved, there's a lot more to come. Dan, congratulations on your success. It's good to talk with you. Thank you. You, now, you're not the first Israeli uh, musician to combine the traditional sort of Israeli pop sound, which is mostly Western influenced, with the sort of Ethiopian elements. But it's made you something of a household name, your style and your unusual uh, mix. So how, what, what is it you're trying to achieve with that? What is the fusion? What, what do you see that fusion to be? Basically, what I'm doing is music. There is no uh, other statement. But uh, nowadays, uh, after... Uh, after the success of two albums and while we are touring all over. Um, we are trying to, to present uh, to the world the Israeli melting pot. There are a lot of musicians from all over, the musicians that were immigrated to Israel and create the sound of uh, this Israeli, the sound of the Israeli streets. What is it, do you think, specifically about your style has made it such a hit with the Israeli audiences? What is it they're looking for, do you think? I don't know, you know, this, there is no, um, there is, it's like a magic, you know, so you just doing music, if, if it uh, speaks to the hearts of people, so it might uh, success, but, but um, I think that uh, the reason um, might be that uh, there are a lot of musicians from all over, from Yemen, from Morocco, from Ethiopia, so I think everybody can find himself somewhere in the cities. Now, uh, the Eth Ethiopian sound, is, as you mentioned, it's, you know, it's not just that, but you have quite a unique sound when you mix the Ethiopian uh, rhythms in. But in, in, uh, in Israel, how does that Ethiopian sound appeal to the, uh, the sort of white Israelis, if you like? Uh, basically, I think the um, white community uh, don't know nothing about uh, Ethiopian uh, uh, immigration. I think, uh, you know, if most of the people also all over the world, wh when you talk about Israel, they will know specific thing about Israel or... The more European side. Uh, yeah, so I think um, also where, with the white community, uh, when they think about Addis Ababa or about uh, Gondor, they will think about desert. And this is it. But there is, it's a culture of thousands of years. And I think um, the project give a taste uh, about the Ethiopian music. Uh, I'm not trying to do it in Ethiopian music. Um, I'm, what I'm doing is Israeli music, which is influenced by all the cultures. And um, I think the Ethiopian music, we just give a taste of this. It's, the, it's just if you go to a a Thai restaurant, it's not just, it's not a real Thai. If you want to eat Thai food, you should go to Thailand. <laughs> you, you have a lot of energy in your shows. I've seen you at the keyboards. You're obviously very dynamic. Uh, how much do you depend also on the singers and uh, the people performing on stage to bring out the audience when you're going live? Uh, I mean, tell me, for example, about you have the very beautiful and talented uh, Kabra Kasai, who's your Ethiopian singer. She sings most of the songs, I gather. Basically, uh, the, the, um, uh, when I um, try to, um, to, to, 
to transpose the, the CDs to, to stage, I thought that it, it is impossible to bring 70 people uh, all over, you know, all over the world and, you know, traveling with buses and airplanes. So I should, uh, I thought about the concept that will, it will be about seven or eight artists that every one of them, uh, each one of them can fulfill the stage by, by, by his own character. Um, such as Ron Ivrin, the percussion player, can make a solo performance for two hours and also Cabra Kassai can do. So, and I need them, I needed them to be very versatile, to sing in many languages. So basically, there is no front man, there is no leader to the, to the, to the concert. What is your role then? I mean, you, you say sometimes you have no roots, you're Israeli born, yeah. an Ashkenazi Jew of, uh, you know, of Israeli birth and origins, but you count on the roots of other people, the other performers. So what do you bring? Um, it's like a coach, you know, the coach in a, in a basketball team. He doesn't need to know, he don't, he don't, he don't have to, you know, doesn't have to, to know how to shoot the ball, but you know, he will watch them. And bring the best out. Presumably. Yeah, he yeah. will watch them. So I think this is what I'm doing. And tell me also about uh, later on the, some of the projects you did, I think in the second album, where you started to use recordings of Hebrew prayers and uh, you know, unusual, uh, unusual elements. Um, basically, the, the first project based on the Ethiopian sound of the Ethiopian uh, community, the immigration that uh, uh, were immigrated from the late. Uh, uh, 80s to 90s and at the second uh, project we thought that it would be nice if we will record a lot of colors of this multicultural nation from the Yemenite uh, prayers of the in, in, in Israel in every neighborhood you can find uh, a neighbor from Yemen and neighbor from Morocco and neighbor. so we just uh, casting all over now tell me about your background. You know, you, you've said in interviews, I have no roots. You know, um, you're actually referring to the musical side of it because obviously your, your family roots are a mixture of German and Russian mm -hmm. from your grandparents. Um, and then of course your parents and your siblings born in, in Israel. Now tell me about those early years growing up uh, in, in Israel, the kind of influences you had. What do you recall your earliest memories? So basically when you were born and when you are raised in a, in a, in a Yemenite uh, neighborhood, so you see that they are keeping their own food, their own clothes, their own uh, music. So this is what I call roots that you feel. You know, as a Russian boy, what, you know, you eat borscht somewhere. <laughs> you know, <Cabbage>. what, <laughs> yeah, you know, what. So there are no, this is what, you know, I could hear the Red Army songs, you know, <laughs> the Red Army band, you know. <laughs> but uh, I, I wouldn't call it roots, musical roots. So basically I was an accordion player. As an, as an accordion player, I used to play, accordion is a worldwide instrument. So, you know, it sounds different from the waltzes of France. Or you keep laughing all the Red Army. Yeah, huh? I'm visualizing, I'm visualizing you doing polka. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, it's, uh, it's, you know, the Valsos of France or the tango of Argentina or, or the, um, the gypsy, gypsy, gypsy music. So, uh, so I didn't have uh, musical roots, uh, you know, by one nation, uh, such as Wogdara Swasa, which is a native Ethiopian. But I think this is uh, what made me uh, very open-minded to a lot of sound all over. How are your parents about this? Because I know you and your siblings all played musical in instruments early on. You were the only one who really stuck with it. How much support did you get and how much interest do your siblings, your brother, uh, brothers and uh, sisters have? If we're talking about roots, every Russian grandmother or, or uh, Ashkenazi uh, mother wants her uh, child to be a lawyer. Right. So or a doctor. <laughs> or a doctor. <laughs> or a doctor and a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, since the, the project uh, made success, I think they all support it and uh, they think. When did you first decide to grow the dreadlocks? Uh, you know, when you are, I, I served in the Israeli army, which, you know, you are shaved for three years, you know, you're doing nothing, but don't touch my hair anymore. No, <laughs> and you are not shaving for two years. And, you know, you just 
extreme. <laughs> rebelling after you were in the army. But I, uh, I was a musician in the army, but you know, uh, you know this kind of uh, atmosphere. Was it, was, was it a happy childhood you had? A happy childhood. Uh, I think uh, it was very, it's very regular childhood. You say sometimes in interviews I've read you say the music is not happy. My music is, I wouldn't call it, you know, yeah, it's not a happy music, you know, it's very mellow songs uh, about love, but... Um, uh, I wondered if that was personal reflection, you know, of an unhappy Yeah, time. I guess, I guess, I guess it's a reflection. There is a reason that, you know, I, sometimes I think to myself, you know, in, at the age of 25, I release a song, a very heavy, deep thought, uh, uh, you know, music, instead of, you know, playing reggae all over. Ah, and parties, you know. <laughs> you know, I, I read also about you having to see a psychologist and stuff in your early 20s, that something wasn't going right. Tell me about that. What was it that, that you felt was wrong? Basically, I, I, I started it while, while I was nine years old. <laughs> it, was, uh, it's, it took time, and I'm still going. Um, I think as, as, a, as, a, as a child, though, um, I, I don't know why, but... I don't. I didn't have uh, friends or stuff. I just, you know, used to play all, all the time. It's not play, play, mm -hmm. uh, all all day long. I so just very uh, lonely atmosphere. Nothing that I very very um, different from the way I, that I'm living now. I, I wonder the the adjustment from having a lonely childhood to suddenly being someone who you know is so recognized and so popular you know one of the leading artists in in Israel uh, you have to go around with baseball cap and glasses to hide <laughs> <laughs> just no they can see you each, so, yeah. no, but how is the adjustment going from the very uh, very private life to a very public life now I find the the Israeli community is very warm community uh, very 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 warm but very very rude also I find it as a uh, as a, as a small village life. All Israel love, you know, they know you, or, but you, know, you will know all, the, all your neighbors. And uh, so if they know you from newspaper or from media, uh, it's much more. But Idan, there's a lot more to talk about, but we're gonna pause here for a break. One on one returns in just a moment.